Hi, I'm Tiffany. I'm going to show you the basics of equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are two or more fractions that have the same value even though they look different. Let me show you some examples. If I have the fraction one half, that is the same value as four eighths because these are both exactly half, okay? So these two fractions have this same value even though they look different. I like to illustrate this with this example. Um, let's say I have a dollar bill. Let me just draw a dollar bill in here. Let's say it's like a one dollar bill, okay? And or I have four quarters. Those have the exact same value, but they totally look different. This is paper, you can fold it. These are coins, they jingle and all that kind of stuff. Okay? This is the exact same thing that's happening with our fractions. One half is the same thing as four eighths, but they look different. Okay? So I'm going to show you some more examples of some equivalent fractions. Example number one. Let's start with two thirds. Two thirds can be written in so many ways, an infinite number of ways actually. We could go on forever writing down fractions that are equivalent to two thirds. I could multiply both my numerator and my denominator by four and get an equivalent fraction to two thirds. Let's try that. I'm going to multiply by four here and I'm going to multiply by four. Whoops, here. Two times four is eight. Three times four is twelve. Guess what? Two thirds is the exact same thing as eight twelfths. Okay? Whenever you do something to your numerator and you do that exact let me repeat that. You do the exact same thing to your denominator. You're going to end up with a fraction that is equivalent to it, but it's going to look different. Okay? Two thirds, you could think of it as my dollar bill, like I explained to you in my last example. And eight twelfths is like my four quarters. Okay? These have the same value, but they look different. Let's try out this second fraction of two thirds. We could do anything to it that we want, but it just needs to be the same thing that happens to the numerator and the denominator. Let's try multiplying by 10. Two times 10 is 20. Three times 10 is 30. Guess what? Two thirds is the exact same thing as 20 thirtieths. And also, eight twelfths is the exact same thing as 20 thirtieths. We are talking about the same values here, although the numbers look different, okay? So two thirds, eight twelfths, 20 thirtieths, these all have the same values. You could think of the 20 thirtieths as 100 pennies in our dollar and quarter example. Or you could think of it as 20 nickels. They're all going to total a dollar even though they look different. So these are still equivalent. Let's move on to example number two. 150 over 325. Okay, wow. We've got some numbers that are larger here as in our numerator and denominator, but that's okay. We can still find equivalent fractions. We can multiply by 2 in our numerator and denominator. 150 multiplied by 2 is 300. 325 multiplied by 2 is 650. 
Okay. We could also do things other than multiplying. Okay. Remember, I've explained that you only have to do the same thing to your numerator and denominator. But they, that same thing does not have to be multiplication. Let's try division. Okay. We could divide by 5. So we can divide by 5 on the numerator and, and the denominator. 150 divided by 5 is 30. 325 divided by 5 is 65. So again, these numbers, 150 over 325, 300 over 650, 30 over 65, all of these numbers are equivalent. All of them. They just look different. I do need to clarify something. When you're doing something to the top and bottom of your numerator to find an equivalent fraction, I did say that you could do anything you want as long as they are the same. That's actually not fully true. You can only multiply or divide. You cannot add or subtract and still get an equivalent fraction. So as long as you are multiplying by a number or dividing by a number, your answer will be equivalent. Let's move on to example number three. We have 75 over 15. Let's try dividing by 5. Seventy-five divided by five is fifteen. Fifteen divided by five is three. So seventy-five over fifteen is equivalent to fifteen over three. How do I know? Because I divided both the numerator and the denominator by five. True, this is an improper fraction, but that's not really our concern here. Our directions told us to find an equivalent fraction, so that's what we did. They didn't tell us to switch. You do what your directions tell you. If your directions were to say, however, make sure your fraction is in proper form, then you would make sure that it was not improper. Let's try multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 2 and find an equivalent fraction that way. Seventy-five times two is one hundred fifty. Fifteen times two is thirty. Do you notice a little pattern between these two? If you take the zeros off of this fraction, you get this fraction. This is just another pattern that you're going to see a lot when you're dealing with equivalent fractions. You could take the 15 over 3, multiply by 10 for the numerator and the denominator, and you're going to get that. So again, your 75 over 15, 15 over 3, and 150 over 30, these are all equivalent fractions. These all have the same value. You could think of this as being a dollar bill, four quarters, and this is 10 dimes. Example number four. We have, we have a mixed number this time. If we are looking for an equivalent fraction, we can do this different ways. We could turn our Mix number into an improper fraction, meaning multiply your denominator by your whole number and then adding your new, your numerator to create your new numerator and your denominator remains the same. Or you could just leave your whole number alone and only change the fraction part. Really, that's going to be dependent on what your directions tell you to do. In this case, I'm going to leave the whole number alone and only change the fraction. Let's try multiplying by 3. 
we're going to end up with 1 as our whole number still, and then we're going to have 3 over 15. 1 times 3 is where I got my 3 from. 5 times 3 is where I got my 15 from. Let's try multiplying again. Let's multiply by 4 this time. If you're doing it to the top, you have to do it to the bottom. We're going to leave our whole number of 1 the same. 1 times 4 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So, all three of these numbers, 1 and 1 fifth, 1 and 3 fifteenths, 1 and 4 twentieths, these are all the same value. I could continue on. I could go on as long as I want to. I could multiply off of this number again. All of those would still be equivalent. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.